Hi, I'm Jeremy. And I'm Ben. Together we are 15 degrees north. Today we're going to show you the sights and sounds of Penang. Penang. Penang is an island of the Malaysian coast, linked to the mainland by two massive bridges, one of which is actually 21 kilometers long and one of the longest in Asia. The second biggest urban zone in the country, the city of Georgetown sits at its heart, with its bustling old town and colonial architecture. Colonised by whom, Ben? Guilty, yes, the British, but the clue is in the name, Georgetown, although the Portuguese did colonise Malaysia long before we did. Yes, but who did the most damage? Touché. Penang was founded by the British in 1786, surprisingly not by a man named George, but by a man named Francis. The Brits then occupied the city until Malaysia's independence in 1957, interrupted only by the Japanese during World War II. As a post-colonial city, Penanga thrived just like Malaysia as a whole, which has the appearance and infrastructure of a developed nation. And just like its European counterparts, the weather too. Mm, you mean its British counterparts, right? Our experience so far has that every day has been really hot, and then around lunchtime there's been this massive thunder and rainstorm, and this is today's. Penang is known as a foodie city, so what better way to wait for the monsoon to stop than sampling all the culinary delights that we could get our hands on. The food in Penang was so good, although we had to wait until Kuala Lumpur to find our favourite dish of Malaysian cuisine, a rendang. Thankfully, rain clears up fairly quickly here, so we were able to get back to seeing the city. And because it's hot, the streets are dry in minutes, and it's as if Noah's flood had never happened at all. Malaysia is a Muslim country, but Penang is close to the Thai border. Subsequently, there are plenty of Buddhist temples across the city. With significant expat communities for its neighbours, each group has built their own religious sites, and it's really interesting to see the differences between them when they are standing side by side. Considerable effort has been made to preserve the older portions of the city, which has been recognised by UNESCO, who inscribed the old town as a World Heritage Site. 
But there are the remarkable clan jetties clustered on the waterfront. When Chinese immigrants came to Penang in the 19th century, they came to work as fishermen, building jetties to moor their boats. They also built floating houses too, clustered together on the seashore. Their descendants still live here today in this remarkable floating village. I kept having to remind myself that we were walking through something real and not imagined because this looked like something constructed like a film set. It's really quite remarkable and definitely one of Penang's highlights. In the middle of Penang is a mountain, which you can ascend via funicular. Officially, it's a hill. 866 meters is a very big hill. So that must have been the longest funicular ride we've ever been on. Uh, we thought we were finished, we were actually halfway through and we kept going and we reached, what was it, 712 meters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The jewel of Penang sits just at the bottom of the hill. Kek Lok Si is the largest Buddhist temple in Malaysia and frankly, it's jaw-droppingly beautiful. I love the fact that all these temples, unlike Christian churches or synagogues or, or mosques, have got these enormous set of grounds with shrines and other buildings to it and essentially it's a complex rather than just a single building so you can actually spend a lot of time here a place of pilgrimage for Buddhists from across Southeast Asia it was built in the 1890s and the complex revolves around the striking pagoda of the 10,000 Buddhas so named because it has 9,999 Buddhas inside why do you lie The pagoda is split into three sections, architecturally. The bottom stories are Chinese, the middle is Thai, and the top is Burmese, representing the blend of cultures in Penang. The result is stunning, and the complex is like a Buddhist Disneyland. A corporate exploitative tourist trap shrewdly constructed by a mega company that's forgotten its origins and just wants to merchandise the soul out of everything beautiful that they ever made, exploiting the stupidity of cultures, basic bitches who use princess identities instead of having their own personalities? The complex is stunning and precisely nothing like a Buddhist Disneyland. That's better. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. And follow us on Instagram at 15 degrees north. Make sure to tune in to our next video to see where in the world we end up next. See ya. Bye. <laughs>